Hello everyone and welcome back to the Siege Mailbox. Someone's got to make me like a cool intro for this or something. This is a video series where you ask the questions in the comments, go ask one right now, and it may appear in the next video. It can be anything Siege related, about the new season, about the lore, about anything. I try my best to answer as many as possible, but as you can imagine, I get thousands of comments, so if you've asked a question before, ask it again, I may have missed it. Or ask multiple, ask whatever you want, the more the merrier. Just want to quickly ask if you enjoyed this video and you like this series drop it a like consider subscribing if you haven't already since we're trying to hit 200k and i'm not going to waste any more time let's get into this video so this one is by shizek and they ask how do you think year 10 will look will they give us the normal amount of four operators and maybe a map and some reworks like they used to or are they going to keep lowering the amount of content every year and why do you think we get so little this year now, of course, we're not going to see this year 10 roadmap until SI 2025, which is this February coming in America. We don't know which state yet. So we are a good little while away from this roadmap, but I think this is definitely a valid question and I can actually answer somewhat some of this already. I am going to bring up a name you probably hear in every single mailbox video and that is Justin, also known as Trichotomy, because he genuinely gives us so much insight into the development of the game and from the devs perspective perspective because he is an R6 dev. And recently on Twitter he done a little behind the scenes thread on the development of Scopos which has a lot of interesting stuff. And one of the ones in this thread he says says the gadget was a concept we prototyped and shelved a couple of years back because it would have been too time consuming to develop. Changing the release schedule to two ops per year finally gave us the time to make it a reality. So for context he's talking about Scopos and Scopos mechanically as an op Operator took a lot of time to develop. There's a lot of resources that went into that operator and with the release schedule they were doing and the time constraints the devs had to work under, they couldn't do it in that time. So it was an operator that was conceived of years ago, but they had to shelve it because they simply couldn't make it with the time they had to make operators. And when I'm talking about this, by the way, don't take what I'm saying here as concrete evidence. This is just the way I'm interpreting what he is saying. Nothing is confirmed, but it's just, he does say that changing the release schedule to two new ops per year allowed them to do this. Seemingly implying that the year nine scope of having two new ops isn't just a fluke and this may be something which continues into the next year. Going into year 10 with a brand new operator, an operator rework, a brand new operator, then an operator rework again. Like I was saying, that can just be a way you interpret this. The way he said it, he might only just be talking about year nine. Bikini did sort of bring this up in question if that does mean that two new ops per year and two reworks are going to be the new norm but he said he can't really answer that until the year 10 reveal so like i'm saying don't take this as anything he could just be referring to year nine but there is a potential that year 10 will have two new operators and two rework operators however we could potentially get four or maybe even more we simply don't know now, in terms of new maps, I definitely think we're going to get at least one brand new map, potentially even more. If we put like our thinking brains on for a second, we have the entirety of year nine and the map team haven't really been doing much. Well, as far as we can see, we got minor reworks to Stadium Alpha and Bravo and not much else. Considering there's still the team there, the same ones who made the consulate rework, Nighthaven Labs, Lair, Emerald Plains, they've not gone anywhere it's pretty safe to say that they've just been working in the background for next year. So we're 100% going to get a new map next year. The map team haven't been given the entire year paid off by Ubisoft. They are still in the office working and developing. So we're definitely going to get new maps. I like to think that maybe with some like reconstruction of how stuff is going to come out content wise, that maybe the map team just took this year to get a head start so we can potentially get more maps more consistent Consistently, because if you have a year's content head start on the maps, you know, you could potentially just get ahead of the curve and get a more frequent output of high quality good looking and competitive heavy maps where if you like to accept it or not Nighthaven, Lair and Consulate are at the top of that competitive and quality end. Emerald Plains is also a perfectly good map as well. So yes I do think year 10 will probably look a bit more content heavy than year 9. I don't know if we'll get four new operators, we'll definitely get a new map and 
I think it's still going to give us a lot to look forward to. This next one is by Ravenwood and they ask, I'm interested on how you would change Maestro and I think this is a good question. So Maestro is an operator who I feel after numerous changes to the game has kind of just fallen out of the game a little bit. He now has a third evil eye after a few most recent updates which is a good improvement to him and you can still make him work very well but to me personally he's just way too easy to counter. Brava flies right through Maestro and as well as this if you're close enough you can just easily shatter it or a secondary gone six can easily destroy it. Sledge can sledge it. There's a lot of stuff you can do. EMPs as well. There was never this many counters to Maestro when he first released so he was very strong but since then there's just been so many counters introduced to the game as well as updates to the glass for example. But I just feel like Maestro has fallen off a bit and a lot of the time I would rather just bring a bulletproof camera and a different gadget on top of that. And I made a video about this a good few months ago at this point about like a change I think should come to Maestro and I think it should genuinely just make the camera be able to be thrown. Now because they're quite hefty you wouldn't necessarily be able to throw it very far but just enough to get it in locations which are a bit out of arm's length and it would still be bigger than a Valk camera. Don't get me wrong it wouldn't replace Valkyrie because you could still see them very clearly. It would also emit a different noise. You would also still be able to just go and six them from a distance and stuff like that and hack them but I think just allowing them to get a bit more unique places would be very beneficial for Maestro because at this current point in time I feel like he's just too close to a bulletproof camera. I think there would be nice if we could kind of get him and is this like a little niche above that but it's still being different from Valkyrie it's still being different from Mozzie and it's still being different from a bulletproof camera maybe this wouldn't really change anything about him and he would still be just as impactful now but I would like to see it and I think there could be a lot of cool unique new locations you could do with it or other than that maybe just remove some of the counters from him maybe make his glass not shatterable I know they want to keep that consistency across the game but even just that would make him a lot better than he currently is. This next one is by Cease with Desist and they ask, do you think the Solace rework is good? What would you add to her kit and power to make it better? Now I'm just going to outright say they went way too far with Solace. She is very underpowered now. I don't think they had to go through all this effort of adding this new overclock system and everything. It just makes her way too messy and I genuinely have no desire to ever touch that operator again in her current state. Now I think there's a few things they definitely done right with Solus, but overall I think they just went too far. Personally, if I was balancing her, the first thing I would have done would have been remove her ability completely from the prep phase, which they did do. I think that was valid. I didn't really think they had to go much further than that. The only other thing I would have done was one of the changes that came in this season, and that is when if Solus pings you physically on your phone, it gives you a little notification that you've been spotted by Solus. Other than that, I don't think she needed this complete change to the overclock system. I don't think she needed the massive cooldown changes and everything. I don't think she should have lost impacts. I think they did kind of butcher her. I simply think it should have been no more solace in prep phase and also a little notification when you get pinged by her. That's it. I really do wonder what the operator graph is going to look like at mid-season after these changes because I can't imagine she's going to be doing very well. I genuinely have not seen a Solus player once this season. This one is by Machina Inc and they ask, what do you think about being able to have a separate customization section for ranked and competitive modes? I'd like to wear my cool skins for unranked modes and my tactical skins for ranked without having to change all 70 plus operators. And yeah, this is something I think definitely should come to the game is a locker pre set. I think this is a great idea. If you're not aware in scrims, face it matches, pro league settings, you're not allowed to wear a bunch of certain skins. You're only typically allowed the default skins and a few pro league skins. That's it. So to start off with, that itself would be a very useful thing for people who on one side, when they play casual or standard or even ranked, like to wear all these different skins, but they also like to scrim. They like to play face it where these rules are in place where they have to wear different skins. 
skins. Having a preset option where you can set the locker to your competitive one or whatever you've named it on whatever ones you've preset would be a very nice thing. I know I would personally like this where I could have sort of my wacky locker where all my operators are wearing outlandish skins and then have another preset which I've made where they're all wearing tactical skins. The seasonal skin for this season is a really nice purple one for every operator so I would make a preset called the kudos collection and just have all my operators purple since it's my brand color. They have been upgrading stuff like this with the new inventory system and stuff like that so I definitely think this is the next stage addition which does need to come to this because having separate lockers and not having to change every single operator skin just because you want to or need to by rules of a tournament it would make everyone's life easier and it would just make customization a bit more fun. So yeah I am 100% on board with this if any devs are watching note this one down a lot of us kind of want this to come and it would be a really nice addition to the game. And the final one I'm going to answer here is by Colby and they say Ubisoft should add more customization for custom games. Add the old pre-reworked maps in and maybe make a setting where you can allow any attachment on any gun for more replayability with friends. Now I agree this would be really fun but I can never really see them doing this because if it's only going to be for custom games they're not really going to spend the resources to maintain that stuff. Every time there's an update or every time there's a new season added and stuff like that all this stuff has to be upkept. It has to be maintained. It has to be looked after. If we're adding all these old maps back to the game that is going to add to the game file size that's going to add to the resources of the game only for it to just be in a custom game I just don't think they would see that as worth it I would like them back I would like night maps back as well but I just don't think they're going to put the resources in for this stuff if it's only going to affect the custom game so yeah perfect world I agree but I just don't see it happening and that is going to conclude this mailbox video. I'm going to try my best to try and get more of these mailbox videos out more frequently. And let me know if you maybe want me to make them a bit longer as well. Usually 12 minutes, 14 minutes for a video is a good sweet spot. But if you guys want me to maybe make them a bit longer, I can do so. The only thing I kind of risk is people getting disengaged halfway through and a lot of really good questions getting missed out for a lot of people. But yeah, be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Drop your questions for the next mailbox. Have an incredible rest of your day. I love you all. Stay safe. Peace.